In this training, we'll be going over a mobile home quote or manufactured quote with Commonwealth. Now, we don't have the ability to quote mobile homes or manufactured homes through Turborator, so we're going to be doing that directly in the Carrier website. Once you've logged in, this is what your home screen will look like. And you want to click on quote in your dashboard. And the first thing you'll have to enter is the zip code. Once you've done that, click next. You can't choose the effective date. It'll populate to today's date. But if you wanted to change that, you do have the option to do that. And the following will be displayed. It's the products that we're able to quote with Commonwealth. So you're going to go ahead and click on mobile home. From here, you enter the applicant's information. Now, as I do that, I do wanna let you know that we can quote both manufactured homes and mobile homes with Commonwealth, and they do allow it in a mobile home park or also on private property. Now, as far as the private property, it cannot exceed five acres of land. And before you move on to the quote, you do want to ask the customer if they live in any rural areas. What I mean by this is if they live in any segregated communities where there's paved roads um, or they're more than five miles away from a fire station, that would need to be reviewed by Commonwealth. Now, you can use your chat feature, you can call them, and what they'll do is pull up the property and look at the surroundings to see if it would be an eligible risk. So on those types of properties, please make sure you call first prior to quoting. Okay, once you've entered the address, if anything is wrong, it will have you validated. So you can do that by clicking on this hyperlink here. And it did validate your address. And Commonwealth does offer a multi-policy discount. Now, how does this discount work? They do offer a discount if the insured has an active auto policy with Commonwealth. So if that does apply, then you would click yes. Go ahead and click on next. In this portion, you'll choose a client's marital status, their date of birth, education and profession. Now, these are not rating factors, but you want to make sure you're making the proper selections based on what the customer's answer was. And you can also add an additional name insured or co-applicant. Now, the only co-applicant that can be added is the spouse if they're legally married, okay? Um, no other relations are accepted, but it will allow you to do that here. Next, you will be filling out property information. So it will ask where it's located. So if we have an M park, which is your mobile home park, as long as it's over 20 mobile homes, that's also part of their guidelines. In a subdivision, which means it's a community of mobile homes that's paved. And if it's outside a park or subdivision, that, those are those rural areas I was mentioning where there's no paved roads and they're kind of secluded. So you do wanna mark this as that um, if it's been an acceptable risk once you've confirmed with the carrier. So we're going to leave any park. The occupancy types that are accepted are for the name insured, either it's their primary residence, secondary residence, seasonal. And what it means with vacation is that they go there in small periods of the year, but it is not allowed for tenant occupancy, okay? We're gonna choose primary just for the quote. It does have a long list of models, mobile home models. That information you'll find in the county assessor page or if the customer has their title, which you will need to quote, you can confirm that information there. along with their year built. And as you can see, they do accept mobile homes up to 1951. They do offer replacement cost on their mobile homes that are newer than 1969, which is really great. So let's just choose a year here. And it will ask for the home quality. You don't want to, unless it's a new purchase, new mobile home, new manufactured home, as far as the conditions. So you do wanna make sure you're asking and best practices team, 
that we pull up the property on Google Satellite so that we're able to make that depiction for ourselves. If it does have a cardboard, you will have to confirm the material type. It is usually aluminum. And before I go there, let me go back to the mobile home part. So it will, based on the zip code, give you a list of mobile home parks. I thought this was a really neat feature with Commonwealth. So you can go by alphabetical order and the customer would be able to confirm. So that's just, just this one. You'll put your length. With Again, this information you'll find in the title. And then moving on to the property details, the type of mobile home that it is, single wide, double wide. It does ask you to confirm the size of the carport. If it does have any additions like a porch, patio, sunroom, it'll also have you confirm what it's built or made out of. And then if it has any additional structures or attached structure, sorry. And then as far as upgrade value, now replacement cost valuation is run in the background to determine what the dwelling coverage will be. If the customer has made any upgrades, let's just say it's flooring, let's say it's countertops or cabinets, you do want to enter the full amount here if it's a combined total of several upgrades. And you want to leave notes here as far as what those upgrades or improvements have been. This is something that will stay on file, that underwriting will confirm. And if the customer needs more coverage in the future because upgrades have been done, um, let's just say these upgrades are done once six months once the policy has been bound, we'll have this option and then we can call underwriting so that we can get assistance with that increase of coverage. Once you've filled out everything here, you go and click on next, where you'll come across some of the underwriting questions. It does have you confirm again if the customer has an active policy, auto policy with Commonwealth. It does ask about children. Now this is new, it's not something we see with our other carriers. If there are pools on the premises or a pool in the premises, and if they have children under than seven years old, for that pool or that risk to be acceptable, the pool does have to be fenced four feet or taller. That has a locking mechanism to it. So that is why they have this children question. Now, they also confirm or ask if the customer provides any daycare, assisted living or home sharing, which would be your Airbnb services. This would make the client an ineligible risk if they do provide any of these. So I do want to point that out. It does ask the time that they lived in the property. So at least 36 months. It does also ask about supplemental heating. So if they have any wood stove that they use as a heating source, it will ask additional questions. Now, if a wood stove, for example, is the only source of heating in the home, it may require underwriting approval um, and it may be denied or accepted. So that is something that will send that over for review. It does also ask about trampolines. Now, even though the trampoline is accepted with a net or without a net, liability for a trampoline risk is excluded. So just because we're answering yes, we're disclosing it. However, liability is excluded, netted or not netted. It does also, also ask about the condition of the roof, if there's any missing shingles, any wear and tear. If there is, they do provide a roof exclusion. Now, the system will not generate that for you. That is something that you would have to call and ask for prior to binding so that they're able to attach that exclusion as part of the application. And it will also ask about their claims history. If the client has three or more claims over the amount of $500, it would make it an ineligible risk. If there's one or two claims, depending on the type of claim, it may be referred over to underwriting as well. If there is more than two claims, you do want to call for approval. Um, do not bind it prior to that. You want to make sure that they're looking at the type of claims prior to issuing the policy. 
You can go ahead and click on next. It will also ask about any dogs. So if they do have dogs, you will be asked to add a dog breed. And it does give you a variety or a list of dogs to choose from. Now, please note that the dogs listed here are unacceptable. Now, if they do have a pit bull per se, it wouldn't make them an ineligible risk. It will generate an exclusion form because it will exclude that liability from the policy and we have to disclose it. So that's what that will do. And I do want to point out that any exclusion form, whether it's the animal exclusion form or the roof exclusion form, they do have to be uploaded to the policy or to the carrier right after binding. That is a must. Now, if they don't have any of these pets and you don't see them on the list, but they do have a dog, you can enter that manually. And it will ask you if that particular dog has ever bitten anyone or if they've been rescued or adopted. So you do have to answer that. And you will be asked to confirm with the client um, and read over this disclosure that they've given you the information to the best of their knowledge, that it's truth. And once you've done that, click on next. And like I mentioned, a replacement cost valuation tool does run in the background. So now that we're in our coverages portion of the quote, you will see that it generated a dwelling coverage for us. Now, if you're, the customer disclosed that they've done upgrades, you can add them yourself here and just make sure you list them um, in that screen that we were at previously. So you do have the option of doing that. The maximum amount we can ensure a manufactured home or mobile home will be 300,000. So let's go back to our original coverage. And like I said, it does already come with replacement value. If the mobile home is older than 1959, then that would mean it's a stated value policy, which means that the customer would have to give us the amount they want the property covered for. Now, I would call the carrier to see if we can come up with that dwelling amount um, alongside with them so that we're not adding coverage that's lower than the customer would need to rebuild or replace their, their home. As you know, other structures, personal property, loss of use are a percentage of our main dwelling coverage. So you'll see what percentage is allotted for that. And for our deductibles, the lowest deductible you can choose from is 250 or up to 2,500. Now, a hail deductible does apply. If the client wanted to choose, they can choose between 500 and 1,000 for the perils of hail, water, and wind. So you can choose that there. The liability, we can go up to 500,000. And in their mobile home program, they do offer earthquake, flood and rising water coverages, identity fraud, equipment breakdown, service line, and water backup. The water backup coverage, it just allows you to select yes, but the total amount that it'll add to the policy is $5,000, okay? So you may wanna make note of that because it's not something that will be displayed here. So $5,000 is the water backup. For the service line coverage, the coverage or the maximum amount of coverage provided under this particular coverage will be $10,000. So you also wanna make note of that. And as far as earthquake and flood, once you select yes, it'll display the premium that will be charged for this and it's adding an additional peril or loss type to the policy. If the customer does have personal property that's higher valued, and if they want to schedule it on their policy, they can. So you would select add personal property. And these are the type of items that you can add additional coverage for. Ranges from camera, jewelry, firearms, musical instruments. And depending on the value of that item, it will, the system will let you know if the customer needs to submit an appraisal as part of the application. So the system will, again, advise of that. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on next. 
In this portion, you'll see a summary of the coverages you just selected. And it will also display the payment plans. So they do have a month to month option. They are your policies. So they can choose between automatic payments. They can choose between direct bill. If they do have an escrow, they can opt for the mortgage pay, paid in full or paid in full auto pay, which means that their card would stay in the system and the policy would automatically renew every year unless the customer calls us and unenrolls from automatic payments. If you do want to see the month to month payments, go ahead and click on the installment option. And once you click on payment schedule, it'll display the monthly amounts along with the due dates. Once you've made the selection the customer has made, go ahead and click on next. And at this point, you can add a mortgagee if applicable. Commonwealth does have a database of different lenders and banks. So it's very likely that you'll find the information already here that you just need to confirm with the customer that it does match. And if not, you do, or you can add it manually. Okay, click on next. And then here you'll enter the customer's contact information. Commonwealth does use emails as a communication with the customer. So if you're able to get an email, that's great. Um, after inspection is done, which isn't actually after the first 30 days uh, or within, sorry, the first 30 days the policy has been issued. If there's any items that came up that they do need to address with the customer. They do let us know, of course, um, but if we have an email on file, it is a fast way to let the customer know as well that there's items that need their attention. And here's where you'll also be inputting the VIN number for the manufactured mobile home. Remember this information you can find in the title. And you want to go ahead and click on continue. Okay, once you've done that, this is what your quote summary page will look like. You will see that it is a quote status. Our agent information, named insured information, effective dates. Now any hyperlinks you can click on and edit. So if for some reason you see a typo, you need to go change something, you can still do that. In this particular portion, which I clicked on the insured's name, you can add a different mailing address. So you can do that there. If you do need to change the payment plan, you can do that here as well. And if for some reason you didn't add the mortgage, you want to go back and just make sure that all the underwriting questions were answered correctly, you need to go back and check that. You would click on the address hyperlink and you'll have that option here. So the mortgagee and then your underwriting questions. Also, if you needed to add an additional co-applicant, again, the spouse, you could do that here. You make any changes to the quote. If you did make any changes to coverages, you would click on quote and it will regenerate that premium. So let's just go ahead and click on it. And you'll get the updated payment plans or premium. Ours stayed the same because I didn't make any changes. So let's just say I wanna continue with binding. Now, before I do that, I want to make sure I go over claims. Now. It is something that we do already with our customers. We ask about claims upfront when we're determining what company will be the best fit. Commonwealth runs their claims history reports after the policy has been found. So we wanna make sure we're being very diligent about discovering claims and listing them in the policy. That way they're not undisclosed and that underwriting will be able to see that they were added on. If a claim is pulled up and the customer is in a paid in full payment plan, any surcharge for that claim will be added at renewal. So it's not something that the customer will have to pay during that term. If the customer is in a month to month payment plan, depending on what that surcharge is, they do spread that across the payments that are left in the policy. And they do advise the customer and us so click on run, report, and bind to proceed. And this is a screen before we get to bind. So we're one screen before binding. 
You'll have another opportunity to confirm the payment plans. And based on that, you're going to be able to make that payment. Now, the customer can pay with credit card or through our agency sweep option. At this time, we don't have e-check. So once you've done that, then you would click on make a payment and that would actually bind the policy. Now, any policy documents will be located on your left portion of the dashboard, which would be your application, declaration page, payment schedules, again, exclusions. We wanna make sure we're using our HelloSign process to collect signatures. They do offer their own e-sign option, but again, we want to make sure we're using HelloSign. And once the policy has been bound, the policy status does change here, but ultimately the summary of the policy looks exactly the same. It's a very easy user-friendly system. And that is what a mobile home quote with Commonwealth looks like.